WSFA 12 Sports. Auburn coach Gene Chizik in the capital city tonight on the Tiger Trek, signing autographs and speaking to the Montgomery Quarterback Club, raising money to help send local students to Auburn. I'll be in town sharing the spotlight with the BCS Crystal Trophy. After helping cleaning up in Pleasant Grove last week, Coach Chizik likes the way our state is all in with tornado relief. People rally to help each other, and uh, I think this is a great case in point. I think you can start with the people right here in this state, and you know how many people have come together to rally uh, to help you know the needy right now. Tomorrow on WSFA 12 News at 6, we'll talk football with Coach Chiswick and get his game plan for defending Auburn's national championship. Evan Longoria wrapping up his Riverwalk rehab assignment. Evan did it again tonight, his third home run in four games. Looks like he's ready to rejoin the Rays tomorrow in Tampa Bay. The visiting Jacksonville Suns strike first with three in the first, but the Biscuits steadily chip away. Bottom of the ninth, Biscuits down one, potential tying and winning runs on base. But Jacksonville's Sandy Rosario slams the door shut, striking out Henry Wrigley. That's your ball game. Biscuits fall short, 6-5. High school sports are back after taking the weekend off because of the tornadoes. A 6A showdown tonight in Prattville, the Lions hosting the two-time defending state champs from Auburn. After a dramatic come from behind win in game one, the Lions going for the sweep. Auburn gets the RBI double from Tanner Simo to score Grant Massey. Then Prattville pours it on. Dalton Kelly's sack fly scores Pete McKee, who had tripled. Then Jordan Friday clears the bases. Prattville takes two from the Tigers. The Lions moving on to round three this weekend. Class 5A, the Tallahassee Tigers on the road against the Russell County Warriors. Rusco's Eagle Wesney is the Joe DiMaggio of Fever Country. He's hitting 39 consecutive games. That's a state record. Hitless tonight, though, in game two, so the streak ends at 39. Not before Eagle flies home when Jesse Nelson cranks one over the wall, a three-run blast. It's a Russell County sweep, 5-1 and 8-3, on to the quarterfinals for the Warriors. Class 3A in the Wiregrass, the Lamp Tigers on the road against Slocum. Future Auburn Tiger Clay Holmes on the hill for the Reb Tops. Lamp rallying back from a 2-0 deficit. Jalen Spragans knocks in Martin Bryant. Then the Tigers start playing small ball. Lamp with the successful squeeze bunts from Heath Young and Chris Dunn to tie it, then take the lead. Lamp sweeps the, season, the series 7-5 and 7-6. They'll host Northside Friday at Patterson in the quarterfinals. He's known as Mr. College Football. Tony Barnhart in Montgomery to honor Troy head coach Larry Blakeney, serving as the MC for Blakeney's appreciation roast. It's an extraordinary thing. Anytime a coach can stay for 20 years in one place, I don't care what level of football you're talking about, Pop Warren, doesn't matter. If you're in 20 years, you've made a contribution, you've done something very extraordinary. Before he led the panel of guests in roasting Blakeney, Barnhart offered his thoughts on controversies that have dominated college football's offseason. Right now, Sanjay, it's a disturbing trend, in my opinion. Now, it, you, when you look at the, the situation in Ohio State and some of these other things, it is it is very concerning. But the good news is, I know a lot of these conference commissioners, uh, they're high on the, they've got integrity high on their scale. There's a lot of money. There's a lot of competitiveness. There's a lot of kids under a lot of pressure playing college football. With players, coaches, administrators, and even bowl officials making headlines for the wrong reasons. Barnhart says there are solutions. One in particular may come as a shock to fans. One of the things we should do, uh, I don't think it'll ever happen, but I think, and I actually I talked to an SEC coach the other day that agrees with me, I think we should, I think freshmen should be ineligible. I think the pressure of high school kids uh, to perform, to perform early, the whole recruiting process is a part of the fact that these kids expect to play as freshmen, to have impact as freshmen, and three years later they expect to go to the NFL draft. Spring practices wrapped up across the country, Barnhart turned his focus back to the field, including his opinion on which SEC school has the best chance at winning the league's sixth consecutive national title. I really like Alabama, uh, particularly in the Southeastern Conference. I think I was there the other day. They are a hungry football team. They're a talented football team. Let's just put it this way. They're very, very motivated at this point after watching their state rival win a national championship. WSFA Sports on location here at the Renaissance Hotel in downtown Montgomery, site of Troy University's Appreciation Roast in honor of head football coach Larry Blakeney. 
He's one of only two coaches in NCAA history to guide a program from Division II to the big time. The Troy football program has come a long way during Larry Blakeney's 20 years as its head coach. There's a, no question that Troy University can do anything uh, that they desire to do. And, uh, you know, you can look 101 years back. Uh, our history in football is that old. And we've covered a lot of ground. We've done a lot of great things. The event was held before a sellout crowd of supporters that included over 30 former players, including current Buffalo Bills quarterback Levi Brown. Playing for him is great. He's definitely a player's coach. Um, I've heard people say that about him before, and I would definitely agree with it. Um, you know, he just he doesn't put a whole lot of stress on you as a player, but at the same time, he makes you want to play hard for him. The future is brighter than ever for the Trojans, but in order to continue their winning ways, Blakeney knows improvements have to be made. We're in a in a, in a phase where we're trying to build some things and, and enhance our facilities and basically it's called recruiting and uh, uh, you know we've got to uh, do some things, we've got to enhance the, the football facilities uh, for that particular quest, the recruiting quest. As a result of his contributions, the turf at Veterans Memorial Stadium will now be known as Larry Blakeney Field. The MC of the event, Mr. College Football, Tony Barnhart, acknowledges Blakeney's impact on the game. Well, it's, it's an extraordinary thing. Anytime a coach can stay for 20 years in one place, I don't care what level of football you're talking about, Pop Warren, doesn't matter. If you're in 20 years, you've made a contribution. Now entering his third season with the Pittsburgh Steelers, former Trojan standout Steve McClendon has experienced almost everything possible in his NFL career thus far. Those experiences range from getting cut to suiting up in this year's Super Bowl. It's amazing and being where I'm from to actually even get to go to a Super Bowl, um, be a part of it, um, it was a great feeling, awesome feeling. After spending most of his time on the Steelers practice squad, McClendon suited up in seven games this season and capitalized on the opportunity. If I did good, I'll stay. If I did bad, I probably wouldn't be there. But um, the coach seen enough in me to keep me around. And I went out there and just gave it all I had and it turned out for the best for me. His journey to becoming an NFL defensive tackle has been hard, but overcoming adversity has become a trend for the Ozark native. The value of the word hard. I look at how adversity remembers destiny. I went through adversity um, in high school. I went through adversity in college, but I also went through adversity in the NFL. But at that, all that whole time, I remember I had a destiny, and I wasn't going to let it go. I was, I was going to continue to work hard. I mean, I push hard, I work hard, I fight hard, and hard just stay with me. McClendon has earned his spot the hard way, his path resembling the one followed by his teammate, James Harrison, now one of the best defensive players in the league. A guy like that is some, something like myself, you know, undrafted. I'm not trying to compare us, but we're both undrafted. Um, he didn't give up. He never took no for an answer. That's it for sports. Now back to you.